Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Ah, OK. Whoops. OK, so I'm Nicole Teco Reese, and I'm from a company called Case Commons. And we've uh, developed, we're trying to replace legacy systems in human services um, using kind of Ruby on Rails and agile development with a user-centric approach. And I want to talk a little bit about how and why we do that. Um, so I hope some of you will recognize and maybe sadly uh, empathize with this experience that you're seeing on the screen. Just imagine that yourself, you know, trying to engage with a government agency, standing in line, you're not really sure how long, not sure that you're in the right line. <clears throat> maybe you're going to renew your passport or renew your driver's license. And when you get up there, they know nothing about you. You have to repeat all of your information. You have to prove why you're there and why you deserve to be relicensed or, or renewed, have your passport renewed. And this is kind of a frustrating experience, right? Well, next, let's talk about the reality. It's not your license or your passport. In this case, it's your child. And you're standing in line at these different agencies and going through this loop again and again, explaining your story so that your child isn't removed from your care or because it, your child has been removed from your care and you're trying to be reunited with your child and you have a set of tasks that you have to do with these different social service agencies. And so why does this happen? Well, today there's a, a ton of siloization across human services technology. So child welfare, juvenile justice, mental health, food stamps, homelessness, Medicaid, you'll notice that these systems have been set up in a way based on organizational structures, procurement, and laws that will design these silos of data and that are incredibly expensive to create and maintain. And the, at the center of these systems are individuals and families, and at the heart of the system is case management. And that's something that, that we take a, a really strong look at and take really seriously, because what we care about doing is making better outcomes for kids and families. So why are we here? Um, so the, the system that works, the process that they have today, is you identify all your potential requirements up front, spend about a year or two you know, having a really thick requirements document, thinking of everything you could possibly need, and then do an RFI or RFP process to get to bid. That'll take about another two years. Um, vendors will implement the solution once they've been selected. And if you're lucky and on schedule, though I know we were talking about it yesterday, I think Eric Reese was talking about how this you know, process was designed with control and efficiency in mind, it almost never leads to that. So if you're on schedule, that's very unique. So users get involved at the very end of the process, and what's happening then is that you're getting people on the system, you're releasing about six and a half years after you defined what was going to solve your problems in the first place. So it's leading to systems like this. And these systems are for the other end of the, the, the equation. So imagine the parent who's really frustrated. On the other side, you've got a caseworker who's trying to decide, should I reunite this child with their parent based on what you're seeing on the screen? And I don't know about you, but I don't know. Based on, I can't even read this. So these systems are designed in a way that sounded really good up front based on a very linear process making a lot of assumptions. And because, as we get closer and closer to having to deliver, people are saying, OK, we've got to make sure that they do the way we, you know, users work the way that we expected them to. So they start implementing exception reports and notifications to supervisors and tons of reminders to make sure that you're abiding by this. Um, so how do we fix that? What we're doing is involving people and just trying to bring parents, and case managers, and everyone involved in the process back into the equation. So what you see here um, and what we're doing today is riding along in their cars, going out on the investigation, sitting in court, going to family team meetings, and observing them, and listening to what they have to say, and sketching with them, and collaborating, and, and releasing technology early and often so that we can hear where we made a bunch of really incorrect assumptions. And what we believe this leads to is better decision making. So better outcomes for kids and families. Because the workers have tools that actually work the way that they think instead of the way somebody six years ago thought it would make sense. 
And that means better data in. And that's what I think I hear from a lot of you talking in the last day and a half is about analyzing the data. When uh, data analysis is really important, but we have to make sure that the data coming in is good. And in child welfare, most of the time, you can't trust it. So we believe good data and effective tools lead to better change for kids and families. And that's led us to implement in Indiana, um, we just replaced their legacy system in 18 months. Um, this has been launched to 3,500 users. It's a Ruby on Rails application um, that's a web app. And it's hopefully more legible than what you saw. It takes use of all the data from other systems. Um, so things like this uh, map of the relationships and seeing the users, in, I'm sorry, the people in a household is all coming from other agencies' data. This is being shared and hopefully a lot more legible so that workers can interact in ways they never thought possible. And so this really leads us to what I hope, and I want to just encourage more, more of you out there because, again, it's just overwhelming. I can tell you that Imer is right. It's amazing to be in this audience with all of you today um, and yesterday. I, I want to encourage more of this. We're looking to design something and have integrated case management to leverage the costs across all of the government's social services, and there's a lot of room for you know, more people to participate in doing that. Thank you.